Good morning. We are we are going to start the session today. Um, initially, we are going to explain how to use the the system for for uh, sending us the questions and interacting with the presenters. So please, John, if you can go ahead, or Filippo. Yes. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you to attend this uh, webinar on IPA for SME. I am Filippo De Fabrizio and I am part of Copacom, a communication agency based in Brussels. Uh, we deal with the institutional communication for the European institutions and agencies. Um, I'm going to spend a few words uh, on the rules uh, uh, and the ways you have to interact with, uh, with us during the, the webinar. Uh, first, of all, first of all, um, the webinar is recorded, so you can uh, you can find uh, the entire session uh, on YouTube after uh, the end of the webinar. Uh, and um, uh, during the the webinar, you can uh, pose your questions uh, um, using uh, uh, the questions uh, menu. You can find uh, uh, it uh, uh, on the right side of your uh, screen. Uh, it's uh, below the polls uh, uh, menu. So you can pose your question there and then we will collect all uh, your questions and we will respond to all uh, your questions uh, at the very end of the webinar. Uh, and I think that uh, it's pretty much it from, from my side, so you can go, uh, Christina, you can start the webinar. Okay, thank you very much, Filippo. So, um, I'm, I'm Christina de la Maza, I'm uh, representing CARSA, uh, which is uh, uh, one member of the of the consortium to, together with GOPA.com, uh, running the action of IPA for SME, um, uh, that is being supported by the European Commission, um, and uh, from, who, from, from which you already have been awarded of uh, some of the services that we are uh, running um, under this uh, action to boost the use of intellectual property uh, to war, what we identified as uh, innovative European SMEs. Uh, the idea of the, of the um, webinar today is uh, to support you in, in uh, understanding well, of course, understanding the services, if it's the case that still you have uh, questions, but, but also uh, to support you in, in, in how to, to benefit from the, the services that you have already been awarded. And uh, for that uh, purpose, we, uh, we will mainly uh, follow the guide for beneficiaries. That, that is a document that you can uh, access through the through the system um, that we are also going to explain. So uh, I will be projecting the guide for beneficiaries as uh, as our guidelines for the presentation today. I will be here with my colleagues Francisco Wuhan and and, uh, and Marco that will help me in presenting all the the services that we are uh, running for you. Um, uh, so uh, we will start with, by the general idea. So um, we project three different type of uh, services. Uh, it's, uh, it's also good to go for the first approach to the to the action to, to our website i4sme.eu uh, to have a general idea of uh, what the services are, are created for. Um, depending on your profile, the ones attending today, you will be beneficiaries of uh, services one two or three, uh, uh, several services, or just one. And, uh, and uh, well, we are going to, to comment the, the, the main uh, aspects of the, of the different services. So, Francisco, if you want to start, I will share the guide for beneficiaries. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm just going to go through a little bit of of what is here. Uh, 
described in the, in the document related to the to the platform that, that we use, the EMS platform, the, the one you already know from the application process. And, and uh, the basic message uh, here we would like to convey to, to you is that uh, this is this is this is meant to be the, the main communication uh, platform, the main communication instrument or tool uh, between uh, beneficiaries, between you and, and us as a coordination center of the action. Um, and um, this has been configured in a way uh, to well to balance the difficulty of of of, of uh, implementing the rules from implementation. Uh, so uh, the, the rules that uh, have been set up by the European Commission in terms of, of how the, the different services are provided and how um, how what, what type of uh, document and uh, information do we need to uh, effectively and successfully. Uh, Provide you with the uh, with the reimbursements or the services that you've been awarded to, and this is the and and, and therefore uh, this has to be the the main the main instrument to to communicate uh, with with the coordination center. For us, it's also uh, a good tool because we we are actually currently um, running this action with uh, with more than what several hundreds of, of SMEs, different like you. And uh, this, this. Uh, so the idea is that uh, this has to be a, a central, a central uh, communication point, uh, because otherwise, uh, I mean, running uh, emails or phone calls or, or whatever uh, on a daily basis would be just uh, 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 unmanageable for for everyone. So um, since you already have a login and a password in the EMS platform, all you, all you have to do to to um, to to enter into the system is just to log in and to go uh, to my uh, my area and, and go to my projects because once you've been awarded with uh, with a service either of either of the three or or, or all three together uh, you, and a space and space on the end on the platform will be um, is enabled to for you so when you when you log in and you go to my area and um, go to my projects you will see uh, there is a there is a, a table most commonly uh, with one line because you have one 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 award uh, uh, um, most of you want one award what we call uh, an action or a project and if you go to uh, go to support documentation under the, the the action column you you will have you will see that there there are two main sections. And this is important because, uh, of course, as I, as I was saying, uh, we, we try to, to, to configure this uh, the, the best way possible, the, 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 the most intuitive way uh, for everyone to understand and, and also us to, to manage all the documents and, and, and the information we, we have to, to have on our hands to, to uh, successfully um, run the, the services. Um, it's, each of the two sections are have been designed and are meant to be used for, for one purpose. The first one, support documentation, is, is a space in the platform. It's a, it's a place specifically designed for, for you to upload only the required documents that support the subsequent reimbursement uh, and justification. I'm talking here about main, mainly uh, service two and service three. So reimbursement of uh, EPO fees and reimbursement of uh, IP attorney fees. Okay, here. So in this section, you only ask you ask to upload only documents to support um, the to, to the, the documents that support the reimbursement. So uh, invoices, proof of payments, etc. Okay, and in the second one, um, well, in there you will have indications. You will you will see indications how to operate within there, the type of formats and uh, and uh, and how to operate within this section. And the second section is reimbursement, which is a place is specifically designed or only designed for you to provide the necessary uh, the necessary financial information to receive the grant. Okay, so so um, and complete the process. So uh, since there well, there's no reimbursement for 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 service one IP prior diagnostic, as I was saying, the financial data uh, requested here are basically two things uh, the the financial identification the financial identification form that we call is, is which is your bank details 
we need to have in order to transfer the, the grant to you, the money to you. So this is something that we need to have uh, in a standardized way. Uh, so th therefore, what, what we use is, is a, standard, a, st a standard template that is used by European Commission to, um, to have that uh, financial information, bank information. You, all you need to do is download that, that uh, template, fill in, uh, sign, uh, stamp and scan it and upload it in, this, in, the, same, in, the, in the platform. So you, 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 you can download and upload afterwards once filled. And the other is the acknowledge uh, of receipt. This is something that we also need to have from you, uh, that you, which template you can download, fill in and upload also again, but of course only uh, this is a, a justification for us to, to, to have that we have transferred the grant to you. So that you, that you are asked to do this only after you received, uh, you received uh, the grant from us. Okay, so that, that is, the, that is the, the main purpose of this. So, uh, in summary, support documentation uh, is to where you provide us with the, um, the justification of, 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 of the proof that you've been uh, having some expenditure in, in paying Apple fees or uh, attorney fees. And the, and the reimbursement is uh, section is where you give us the financial information to practically proceed with the, with the reimbursement. Okay, here we, we also accompany the, in, the, in, the, in the document a couple of screenshots of the platform so you can easily see how it looks like before you, you go for the first time. As you can see, well, it's quite uh, user-friendly and intuitive. We, we try to make it uh, as, as clear as possible. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, in, the, in the support documentation uh, that you will be, you will be having um, like subsections inside okay depending on on the services you have if you have service two and service three for instance you will have a specifically place to upload the documentation for service two and if you have service three the same and if you have both you will have two different subsections within there so you can easily see where to upload the documents and and that is uh, basically it um we can the, with this uh, tool we can we can follow up and monitor uh, whether you have uh, up provided us with the required document, documents, either uh, justification documents or a financial documents. Uh, we can also uh, see, well, have a look at the documentation and it, uh, analyze it and see if it is correct or not. Uh, and if, if it's not, to, to, uh, to label it as not valid. Uh, 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 so you can, uh, once after uh, you go back and see that it's been labeled not valid, see uh, how to uh, correct that. So, um, so well, this is basically it for the moment. Uh, if you have any, any further questions, we can address them later on in, in the webinar. Um, now I can give, pass the word again back to Christina. Uh, Thanks. So, um, well, the, we, can, we can go uh, uh, into details of the different services, but for you to have a, a, a general idea of, of the action, um, well, as explained initially, we are promoting services to support innovative uh, SMEs, uh, European SMEs, for the protection of the, of the intellectual property. Uh, this is an action that has been mainly designed by the European Commission, uh, let's say years ago, even before we started this action. So um, part of the, the services, uh, like the Service One, uh, are being implemented by external experts trained and, uh, and, uh, and with, a, with a specific procedure defined by the European Commission that we are managing for your, for your service, but it's uh, somehow out, out of our uh, uh, general management. Um, and it will be really important for, for the European Commission and, and, uh, and also for, for all the uh, stakeholders in, involved, like you are, uh, to uh, measure how is going to be your progress in the next years because of the, of the services, supporting services we are providing. That's why I know, um, because we, we, also, we are also an SME, uh, I know that the completing surveys sometimes is uh, is uh, kind of boring. We are we try to to be uh, to go directly to the point and, and not to have uh, 
really heavy uh, surveys, but uh, it is important, at least for the service one, uh, among others, it is important to measure uh, what is the situation of your company today when you are awarded with the service, and, and what is the situation of, the, of your company in, in some months, one year, uh, after having uh, received uh, the, the, the support in services. So, uh, the, the first step that we need from your side is to complete what we call the uh, self-assessment. Uh, um, the self-assessment is uh, somehow a picture of, the, of what is your um, uh, involvement in, in IP protection uh, today. If you are uh, aware, if you have already uh, supported services from external, if you have your own capacities in, in, the, in the company. So, this first step is, is really important uh, and that's why in some of the parts of the Guide for Beneficiaries you will, you will find the, the, the word uh, mandatory. So, uh, uh, in, in, in any case, it's, it's, it's uh, really important for the impact, for measuring the impact of the, of the action. Uh, it, is, it is also important for the ones receiving the service one, um, we, are, we have designed the service, we are trying to to do our best in, in providing you the, the, the service uh, by the coordination of, of external experts, but uh, we always need to know what was your impression when receiving the service, uh, when working with a specific expert, uh, what, what areas of improvements you, you see from your view. So this satisfaction survey is the, the place where you can explain and uh, you can give us the detail that we will read uh, after and we will analyze in order to improve the, the action in general. There will be also uh, a measure of impact uh, after the, the, the action and in, after the, the service are delivered in one year and in, in three years uh, because the, this action will last until, until the end of uh, 2021. So, uh, I mean, we will be running, that's why we are insisting and we are informing you continuously about the different cutoffs, uh, that uh, this, this uh, cutoff system means that the, the call for, for, uh, for um, applications is open uh, continuously, uh, but there, there, there is a time uh, that we call cutoff when we prepare a ranking of, of beneficiaries and, and a list of, of companies that uh, is also published in our website. Apart from being awarded, what is really important and we are going to insist during the whole presentation today is the activation of the services. I mean, being awarded uh, at one of the, of the cutoffs means that you will have a specific time, for, a deadline uh, for the activation of the services. Um, now that, that the action is, is running uh, the third uh, cut off and they will come the, the fourth for the next month. Uh, we are, we are uh, being really strict on the deadlines uh, because now uh, you know how, how the system works and uh, we don't want to uh, somehow to, to think, to preserve the, the, the economy for, for uh, one company that is not going to be active with the service. As soon as you activate the service, you will see that uh, it will be ready for you until the, the end of the, of the action, meaning uh, the end of, of 2021. So, uh, uh, what is important for you is to think if you are really going to use uh, the service and, and, and to coordinate with us the activation of it. Um, apart from the, the additional financial information that Francisco, Francisco has been presenting uh, before, uh, we will go straight to the, to the service one. Um, that was presented by me. The service one will be that we call IP pre-diagnostic service. Um, as I was explaining, this is a, um, a service uh, that uh, was designed by the European Commission and there was a, a training for a specific IP experts in, in, in each country. Uh, the companies that can uh, apply and can be beneficiaries of this service are the ones uh, corresponding to the uh, 11 named countries. So, uh, the, the companies that are not represented uh, by those uh, 11 countries won't be beneficiaries from this, from this service one. Uh, so, I'm talking about Austria, Denmark, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, Greece, Italy, Ireland, Latvia and Sweden. Those are the ones that can benefit from the service one. 
And the service one is a, is a, um, a service provided by, by third parties somehow, so by experts per country, and some of the countries coordinated by the national IP offices, as you can see here. And in, in all the countries, if not coordinated, under the supervision of the IP offices. So um, we, cl we work re really close to the, to the IP offices that are really, uh, th that uh, think and that, that uh, they uh, are aware of the importance of this action for the, for the national development of the, of the innovative SMEs. Um, and, and working until now quite close to the SME instrument. Uh, that's why one of the requirements for being a beneficiary has been until now to, to have the, the SME uh, instrument, uh, um, to, to hold the SME instrument uh, beneficiary uh, document. So um, the IP pre-diagnostic will be supported by an expert that uh, will contact you, depending on the country, it will be through the coordination center that will represent or through the IP office. Uh, the idea is that as soon as you uh, receive the um, communication that you have been awarded by the by the service one, um, you will be contacted by uh, by us or by the IP office with the idea of uh, uh, receiving the assignment of an expert with a name and uh, with all the information about the expert that you would like to have, including a short CV and uh, the, the in case they represent an, an organization, the organization that they are representing. So you can also validate the non-conflict of interest with your business or with your activities. So the expert will, will help us, will support you in uh, creating an IP business strategy. We, we put the word business because uh, uh, the idea is that they initially know uh, uh, what is your business about uh, using the IP self-assessment plus uh, the information that uh, they can find uh, through other different public uh, um, places like the website and so on. And, um, and uh, they will schedule an initial meeting with you um, for, the, for the preferably um, personal meeting, uh, but in some cases because of the distance and because of the availability in agendas, some of the interviews are being done by uh, Skype. And there will be an initial um, visit that we um, we are here in the. If you go to the page ten, we are estimating in about two between two and, and four hours for collecting uh, all the information they need to prepare an identification of your IP assets, uh, an identification, a, a knowledge of your business sector, markets, uh, perspective, and, and a strat a business strategy in general. Uh, with the idea of uh, for them to uh, then work offline and prepare uh, a final report um, that will be uh, in this case under the supervision of the of the uh, IP offices uh, for you to know that uh, this this information is protected by confidentiality and uh, uh, until the point that we are not uh, we don't we will not have access to the to the report that uh, the, the expert will deliver to you. And, um, and then the, the, you will receive the, the, the corresponding report. And what we will need from your side is um, the, the confirmation of, of the service by the completion of the satisfaction survey. Um, so uh, the uh, activation of the service one from our side is done uh, from the moment that uh, an expert is assigned to you for giving you the service. Um, the, in, in this case, the service one is free of charge, uh, meaning that the expert will be paid directly, directly uh, um, by the coordination center. Um, so you will not receive any invoice uh, from the expert and uh, you will not de deliver any payment everything will be done by the coordination center, meaning uh, by, by us. Uh, the time frame for the, for the deadline is four months uh, since you get the communication of the award of the support services. So uh, um, that, that was in the case of the third cutoff was the 
3rd of December. Uh, so we, we will count four months uh, as the deadline for the um, activation of this uh, service room. Uh, we will receive your questions uh, through the chat and then we will try to, to answer to them uh, as regards to service one uh, at, the, at the end of the session. So um, now my colleague Marco is going to explain the details of service two. Hello to everybody. I am Marco Rajadio from CARSA and I'm here to explain you the service two, also called the IPO 50. So, uh, to receive the parcel reimbursement of uh, EPOFI, uh, the beneficiary have to follow a stepwise approach that is consists of three main block steps. The competition of the self-assessment, the activation of service two, and then at the end, the reimbursement step. So about the competition of the self-assessment, uh, basically, uh, once the beneficiary received the award communication mail, at the end of the mail, appear a link that the beneficiary should follow to complete the self-assessment. That for us is a mandatory step to activate the service too. Once completed the uh, self-assessment, this doesn't mean that the service too is activated. To activate the service too, there are two main steps, which uh, two main options that there are basically two uh, uploading in EMS service uh, website at least one valid IP attorney invoice at its corresponding proof of payment, or by uploading a valid EPO patent debit or the submission confirmation. However, there is other, uh, also a second option that uh, is to send us to the calls uh, at ipa4me.eu a valid IP attorney invoice. The important things to activate service two is to do it uh, within four months uh, after receiving the award communication email. This means that for all the beneficiary of cut of three that received the email the 23 of December, they have four months to activate service two. However, in the case a uh, beneficiary has been awarded for both service two and service three from the same cut off. Once they activated one of the two service or service two or service three, they have other additional four months to activate the missing service. Uh, to activate the service, so uh, there are a step approach to follow. There are two uh, main situations. The first is to, uh, as stated before, to uh, uploading us, uh, uploading in the EMS website a valid EP attorney invoice, which should contain specifically information. First of all, the invoice should be dated after the date of the communication of EPA for SME support. That for cut of three is the 23 December and not the 10 of October as right in the guide. There is an error, sorry. Then the invoice should uh, um, contain a name of the patent attorney. This is really important for us to receive not only the name of the company who did the invoice, but also the name of the patent attorney. Then we need to um, check in the invoice the patent application process, who could be the title of the invention or only uh, the EP number of the application. Then should appear the epoch service codes Basically, uh, we cannot uh, reimburse all the cost of the PEP office, but only uh, the one containing in the table two. So basically, there are some, only some eligible uh, EPO fees. Uh, to facilitate the reimbursement, uh, we kindly ask you to include in the invoice in English the following model state that help us to check easily all the documentation. The second option, in the case that uh, directly the beneficiary uh, asked for the EPO fees uh, without asking the permission or the help from um, EP patent attorney. In this case, what we need is a valid EPO debit order submission confirmation. So basically, beneficiary can only be reimbursement once they have in PDF document of the debit order submission confirmation from the EPO online filing. In this case, what we need to check is the 
debit order must reference to the title of the invention or directly to the EP application number. And then, as stated the, also for option B, depot service code. Uh, together with this document, what we need also is the proof of payment. Uh, what we need basically is the only bank transfer receipt that will uh, indicate the name of the beneficiary, the EP pattern attorney, in the case we have in the option A, and the invoice number will be accepted. Once basically the beneficiary uploaded in the EMS website one uh, this document, we can proceed with, uh, with the check of the documentation and the case. So all the documentation is good for us, and so we can we can consider valid. We can so proceed with the reimbursement. So step five is the confirmation of the reimbursement. So once the reimbursement has been received. Once uh, the reimbursement that be received from the EPA for MAC coordination center, basically the beneficiary have to upload a senior confirmation, always in the MES uh, website, using the model that we provide in the support documentation section of the EMS. It's very important to underline that once we activate we consider service to activated the beneficiary can ask for a second reimbursement within the panel uh, within the end of the ipa for my project and uh, i hope that everything is clear thank you very much okay here francisco again uh for, to explain a little bit um, service three, which well, which covers, as you know, uh, other different type of fees, but for which the approach is more or less the same. And I would like to um, um, insist again and emphasize that it's very important that you, even though we are uh, reviewing and revising the, the guide for beneficiaries uh, on this webinar, to, to carefully read it. Uh, carefully read it and go through it. It's not that long, as you can see, and we have tried, again, uh, to our best of knowledge to, to, to make it as simple as possible for you, uh, combining and also trying to balance also the difficulties or the, the conditions that we is, that constrain us in terms of, of what we need to, uh, to have in hand or in place in order to reimburse um, the, the grant. Okay, so uh, and uh, in addition to that, I also like to, um, before going to service three, also into, to uh, reinforce the message or or, or, or or explain the message of what why activation of the service and what we have um, try why we have um, uh, configured this this way. In terms of we um, we uh, the com it combines uh, two situations in which, as, as Christina was also saying at the, in, for service one. We need that once you have been awarded with a grant, we need you uh, to um, well start as soon as possible. Start with with all the services. Uh, also knowing that, uh, for, for especially for service two or service three, also it, it is not that easy to start. Uh, but th that is why we ask you to planify well the application because you have different cut off dates to to apply. Uh, so. Um, but at the, at the same time, we also aware that the total maximum uh, grant uh, reimbursement cannot always be achieved in one shot, in what uh, in one payment request. That is what we call. So that's why we enable two of two um, two shots. In, so it, it, so you are uh, you can achieve the maximum amount uh, to in in two different. Um, documents uh, or payment requests. That's why com combining that we need you to start uh, moving your activities and your papers um, and with the fact that sometimes you cannot achieve the maximum amount in just one shot, that's why we enable two times. And that's why we say that we need to activate. Activation means to ask for reimbursement the first time. You can achieve the maximum in the first time or if not, you have another a second option, a second alternative, or a second payment request. That's that's the that's the meaning or the rationale behind uh, service activation 
and 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 having two times two or two options to to achieve the maximum. So if we go to service three, uh, IP uh, reimbursement of IP attorney fees, and um, in the first uh, picture we try to 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 uh, convey or to depict the the normal or the, the normal process you will follow uh, in terms of of uh, in terms of even even if you were not in IP for SME initiative, or even you were you didn't apply for for support, you um, you would uh, work with your IP attorney to check if the invention or the technology or the the knowledge uh, the know how you have is um, can be subject of a, an European patent. The 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 attorney would uh, issue an invoice to you. You would pay it in somewhere after uh, uh, and that would be it and then if we, if we put uh, IP for SME uh, uh, on top of that uh, for us what would you need to do is that you uh, complete the more or less some someone before the the IPSA the self-assessment uh, uh, survey we ask you to do uh, then um, you will have some work with the IP attorney you would pay it and once you have both things you have the in, the invoice of the attorney and the and the proof of your payment you would put these things together and and request partial reimbursement either the first one which will activate the service or the the second and last one if if you if you didn't achieve the maximum amount uh, in the first one okay and for us then we will have to confirm the receipt of reimbursement that was uh, this uh, knowledge of receipt i was telling you about uh, earlier Okay, so this is more or less the time uh, or the timing, the process that we we see. Um, so uh, and and in this, in light of this, or in, in within this scope, uh, our our um, as coordination center, we are uh, will be responsible for two basic things or two basic elements to, to monitor the whole process, the documents that you provide, uh, and that and that the the deadlines are respected, that you well activate activate service uh, within the time frame we established which is four months and uh, and and also proceed with the payments to you um, and uh, again uh, here we come to the to the concept of, of, of because it, we, we put this here in the document because we, we we've uh, noticed that well, many of you uh, in the past actually um, were confused about uh, activation again and self-assessment and so on uh, meaning that you know uh, once you make the search assessment uh, survey, you would uh, automatically activate the service, and this is not the case. Uh, search assessment is a mandatory requirement to start the process, but only to start the process. The process will be started, but that doesn't mean that the service has been activated. That is another, another thing, as I was explaining. So this, we try to put this uh, in, in a uh, correlative or consecutively uh, actions. Uh, step one, self-assessment made, yes. Uh, service activation, yes, and then reimbursement. This will be uh, all three steps that are consecutively exclusive, meaning that one cannot take place without having completed the previous one. And that is something important for us as well. Um, uh, well, uh, and uh, so the picture for you, uh, even though it says second uh, cutoff date, is it you are members of, of the third cutoff uh, with the batch of SMEs that will select for the third cutoff. Is more or less the same graphic we saw before, but with the with the dates, and uh, meaning that the award coming communication date would, is 23rd December, as we were saying, four months after, as a deadline is the 23rd of April to service activation, and uh, here we enter uh, uh, another um, another concept to 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 give more confusion into the into the whole thing, as I was saying. Which is a service activation extension. This is something that we figure out that we, might be interesting for you uh, when you have uh, been awarded with the service two and service three at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, we will go to that later a little bit, and then a final request of reimbursement. So, uh, communication is the award, the, the, the date when you were uh, communicated via email that you've been selected. Service activation deadline is the limit uh, for 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 service activation. Um, um, if not, the, the service will be will be cancelled. Um, and then service activation extension 
uh, this is important, uh, beneficiaries will be given an additional four months to activate the service three in this case. When they activate the corresponding service two, support from the same cutoff uh, date. Okay, so if you if you've been awarded with you, if you apply for service two and service three, and we 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 we, we select we awarded you with those, um, if you activate service two before 23rd of April, you will have four extra months uh, to activate or to make the first payment uh, request for service three, and vice versa, as you could see in in the service three in service two description. Okay. So, um, um, so service three beneficiaries must activate their support within four months after the, the communication. And here, um, and activate means for providing or making the first payment request, which is consists of an invoice, one or several invoices of, of IP attorney uh, entitled to act before the EPO plus the, its corresponding proof of payment. So here we also introduce a, a graphic which you can follow to, to understand this rationale. Is uh, 23rd of December, communicate. Have you been awarded with service two and service three in the same cutoff date, in the third cutoff date in your case? Uh, no, only service two or service three in this case. So the deadline is unmovable. I mean, it's, it's 23rd of April, yes or yes. But if the answer is yes, you, you were awarded with service two and three, then have you activated either services before the 23rd of April? No. Then, then you 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 need to to do it. Uh, you need to do it uh, on the 23rd of April. And if yes, if you activated uh, any one of the two, in this case we're talking about number three, service three, then you have four months of extension to the 20th of August to activate um, the other one. Okay. So, um, well, yes, and once activated, this is important, this is, this is what I was referring also earlier, once activated, meaning that activation is the f making the first payment request, you will have until the end of the action, to the end of 2021, to do the second uh, payment request, so to achieve the maximum grant uh, for, for that service, for that service, okay? If you achieve the maximum in the first, then of course you're you you you're done and you're you're perfectly okay and you, you don't have to wait until the end of the action. You have to wait to for to make a second because you've reached already the maximum. But if if you uh, if you have not reached uh, the maximum in the first one, you have until the end of the action to uh, to organize yourself and and you know planify and, and 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 collect invoices and so on to to make the second request. Um, if a beneficiary does not activate the service, in, in this case service three, after, uh, within these four months, the, the, the service will be cancelled by us um, and uh, you can, I mean this doesn't mean, you, I mean you, you cannot reapply again to, to the program to IP for SME uh, uh, within the, for the next cutoff date or within the, the, the any of the forthcoming cutoff dates uh, during this year and next year as well, without any penal penalization, okay. Um, well, then uh, this year we, we also explain the, st the step by step, the first self assessment, which is the first thing as a mandatory thing you need to do uh, in order to start. Uh, and, and, and what is for us uh, a valid IP attorney invoice? It has to be an attorney uh, with the name of the, of the person, uh, it has to be entitled to act before the EPO. We can check that. Uh, you can check that in the in the EPO list of professional representatives, which is online. You can check the, all the all the all the attorneys uh, entitled to act in front of the EPO are, are listed there. Um, so we need to have the name of the attorney. We need to have um, then the name. Um, well, the, the title of, of of the invention you're trying to protect with the European patent with the uh, uh, potential eventual. Uh, European patent uh, and or we need to also have to have the European patent application number in case uh, uh, you already have one you are in the process of, of obtaining that one and um, um, meaning that uh, well meaning that uh, we would like to emphasize that uh, service three on all the services uh, are um, and are meant to support 
the cost of the fees uh, related to only to a unique European patent application process. So, what we found out that not many, well, some uh, companies, some of the companies we had, uh, or we have selected, uh, put together invoices of, of of works of attorneys that are dealing with different patents uh, or patent processes, and this is uh, this is not acceptable. I mean, we. For us, this all the an invoice in one service has to be related to one single application patent, single patent application. So one patent application in the EPO, one patent, uh, one uh, IP for GMA application uh, or service for service three. Uh, so a valid IP after invoices will only those reflect work done in relation to one patent, uh, as I was saying. And we also ask you to include uh, this phrase in English because we are perfectly aware that, uh, of course, you're working currently or you, you're normally working with your attorney in, in, in your language. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, the attorney issues the invoice in, 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 in your, your own language. Uh, but in this case, in order for us to, 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 to review and to check that everything is okay, we, we, are not, uh, we don't have uh, expert uh, with speakers, native speakers, you know the, the language in Europe. Uh, we would we ask you to please include this um, this phrase in in English, even though the rest can be in in your original uh, mother tongue language, um, to, in order to, uh, to for us to 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 be easier to to check, and uh, the, the the easier you you made it make it for for us, the the the, the faster everything goes. So that's why we ask you to do this. Proof of payment. Um, Proof of payment is a bank transfer receipt or a bank certification that we we can also. It's important that we can uh, keep the trace or tra the traceability of that that proof of payment correspond to the to the to the invoice that correspond to to the patent etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So if everything is uh, makes sense and everything is connected, uh, the documents will be validated and the reimbursement will occur within the the next weeks after checking. So, uh, request password based movement. I, I was telling you, you, you have, uh, you, you, you can upload a, a single PDF uh, with all the, the invoices and proof of payments, or make a zip, uh, a, um, um, a zip file with all the documents together, uh, and upload it in the EMS platform. And a confirmation of reimbursement is once we've done the, the payment to you, you, as I was saying, you, you make this, uh, you fill in this uh, knowledge or receipt and you upload it in the EMS platform again. And finally, uh, well, some important rules for, for, uh, for you to know and also for us, because uh, as I was saying, uh, you know, some, some, some of you, I mean, I'm not, not saying that all of you, but some of you may really make it difficult for us to, uh, to, to check and, and to, you know, to validate the, the the documents that we receive and you send to us uh, in relation so uh, to this uh, so um, so again the 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 the, the, care, the the more careful you read this and the, the, the and the the, 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 um, the more you follow the instructions and make it easier to us everything would be would be would be better everything is close to, to everyone so one patent application process in the EPO or potential EPO uh, um, is related to one IP for SME application you made for service two, service three, or both services at the same time. Okay, so that is uh, that is clear. Therefore, documents provided by you to claim partial reimbursement must only must only refer to a, and contain and contain information about one single. Okay, no documentation contain information about several patents. As I said, this is uh, this is happening sometimes. Will be allowed, and this is, will disqualify the whole payment request. Okay. Furthermore, documentation for payment request must follow the indications here; uh, uh, otherwise, it will be disqualified and marked as invalid in the platform. Yeah, but uh, just uh, to explain that in the case you have several patents, yeah, you will need to to uh, to apply several times in the IP for SME action. So uh, that doesn't mean that if, if in case you have several patents, you are not supported by, uh, by IPA for SME. The, the point is that you will need to uh, apply several times. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, exactly. uh, is available in, uh, in the platform, it's available in the action, uh, it's available uh, during the time uh, we'll be, we'll be, uh, we will be running. Uh, 
mm -hmm. running it. So we exactly. need million, several years. So uh, this is not anything that we close and and that is not uh, following your your IP strategy. Exactly. Huh? So, if, if you have several potential patents in your portfolio in your in your company, uh, the, what, what we're saying is that once one when we uh, award you with a with a service, it's for only one of those patents. Meaning that when you applied, when you did apply, you applied only to support one patent application process. If you have several patents, you can apply several times for us in the same cutoff date or in the different cutoff dates. Okay, that's that's uh, that's the message. But it's the, the documents we are managing in in in, in EMS for one, uh, one for one service is has to be um, related are related only to one patent. Uh, what else? Um, well, this is this is something we put here because I mean, uh, as I was saying, having hundreds of 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 of, of you companies, um, if um, um, not not following the instruction, it, it will make it uh, totally unmanageable. And and on on and this will um, um, this will be on with this will not benefit. Uh, you so that we we, we put this in, that, that we we as coordination we we will not inform we will inform neither about validation nor reasons for invalidation, especially for not reasons of invalidation because the reasons for invalidations are written here. So if you don't follow, it will be invalid. <laughs> so uh, so you are asked to please um, follow uh, periodically in the EMS platform the documents you uploaded. See if they have already been. Uh, validated or invalidated, uh, and the, the thing is that if the documents are correct, uh, you you will see that are correct uh, within the next uh, weeks. Uh, in looking at the bank because you will be transferred the, the corresponding amount, and if there if, if it's invalid, you will see it in the in the EMS platform, and and that's and, I mean that's that's basically it. Um, it's not I mean it's not that that uh, it, there are some very very specific cases in which. You, you can, you and I and, and us uh, can have some doubts, but uh, in general conditions, uh, it's very straightforward. So well, we will then address some questions afterwards. And uh, just to let you know that we also have a, a um, support service, a service cancellation procedure, because we are also perfectly aware that sometimes things don't turn out to be as easy or as you know as as fast as one imagined in the beginning and sometimes you apply for for our support and and well uh, the daily basis and and, and things uh, are delayed somehow and, and of course you can uh, without any problem uh, tell us that you want to cancel the service because the this this and that cost with IP attorney or April fees will be done later on in the year maybe and then you will cancel and you can of course apply to the next cut off dates of our program okay so without any problem so that's why we enable this 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 process in which you you you, you ask for a cancellation you you complete and sign the um, uh, uh, the template we we made available here and send it to the calls at ip4sme.eu email account you said this will be automatically deactivated or cancelled without any penalization, as, as I was I was saying. Here's the here's the you can see the model for for that. Well, no, this is the model for discontinuation of patent application process. We will have a, a also a, a let's see, this is the support service cancellation letter model. It's very simple. You simply click on the on the corresponding service and and sign it and send it to us. And here's also. This is something we ask uh, because sometimes, I mean, the work of a patent, and this is related to service three, as a matter of fact, um, the work of a patent attorney sometimes end up to be, or uh, ends up in a conclusion that, uh, well, you know, this this knowledge or this technology you have is not subject or is currently at this stage uh, or is beneficial, ben more beneficial beneficiary for you that you don't apply for a European patent for any reason. And you stop, you stop, or you discontinue this this process, and it's it's also okay for us that this conclusion because it's, it's it's a conclusion of the work of a professional uh, IP attorney that tells you uh, that for the moment uh, or for whatever reason 
you can click on 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 the, the decision recent uh, the, the if the european patent uh, will not continue uh, at least for the moment and as i said for us it's a totally okay and reasonable conclusion you may have from your peers okay that will be my side so uh, maybe we can have a look at the at the questions you may have uh yes we have um, a couple of questions very specific so the first one asks whether uh the, if the ip fee and the um, ip attorney fees can be separated into two different documents well yes uh, actually that not only can be that they have to be separated if, if possible i i guess you they mean in the in the in in the case where um, where the IP attorney pays the Apple fees on behalf of the company, and uh, in in that case, it would be better for us that uh, well, that the the uh, separate the, the IP attorney invoices to the company the Apple fees uh, indicating which Apple fees are those. Uh, and the services related to doing that, the time spent and reviewing documents and so on, would be in a separate, of course, separate invoice that goes to service three. That that is the that is that would be the the best way of, of or, or the the way to do it. So if an IP attorney pays the Apple fees on behalf of the company, he would he would issue an invoice only with the Apple with that amount or the Apple fees explaining which are those Apple fees in order to, for us to, to check if they are eligible or not. And, and in another invoice, he would or she would issue an invoice, a, a she, he or she would de describe or charge the, his fees for doing that job. And that would be for service three. That's the, that's the way we, 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 we want to have it, so we, we need to have it. Thanks. Um, next question is when uh, could they expect to be contacted by the expert for service one? Well, uh, actually, we are we are uh, really quick in the in the sense that uh, at the same time, the communication to the services awarded uh, is sent mainly uh, the same day. We published the, the beneficiary companies in our website, and at the same time, the same day, we informed the IP offices uh, about the, the companies that uh, have been awarded so that they can directly contact them. And in the case of the, of the countries where we are coordinating the communication with the experts, uh, if, if it's not the same day, the next day we, we send uh, an email to the beneficiaries presenting the experts that, that are available um, for them to, to give the service. So in less than 24 hours, we activate from our, our, uh, from our side the communication in between the, the experts and the, and the company that has, uh, has been awarded for service one. Thank you. And the last question is, what are the reimbursement limits of services two and three? Well, the, the, the limits uh, are, are for service two, 2,500 euros uh, per, I, well, per, as I was saying, per, per, per patent process. So per service, as you know, one service in IP for SME is one patent application. So 2,500 maximum for EPO fees and 2,000 euros maximum for IP attorney fees. Yeah, that, that, those are the maximums. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are aware that those are not great numbers, but but sometimes uh, as uh, connecting to the to the Two options or the two uh, two um, two um, 
different requests to to achieve those maximum uh, is that sometimes it sometimes because the, actually that those are the, the maximums in in absolute numbers but the, the the real definition of 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 the support is for service for service two is 75 percent of the invoices of, of what sorry 75 percent of the of the EPO fees up to a maximum of 2,500. So if you present uh, an invoice, uh, an, an, an invoice, or you present April fees to a total amount of one thousand, uh, we will pay uh, seven hundred and fifty euros. Okay, you know, seven, always seventy-five percent of the, your invoice up to a maximum uh, of of two thousand five hundred. So that's why you will have one one thousand uh, two hundred and fifty for the second payment request. Mm -hmm. And, and the same for service three. Service three is always 50%, so half of the invoice of the IP attorney up to a maximum of 2,000 euros. That, that would be. Yeah. But because you can you can manage uh, different patent, patents, and because you are you are able to apply several times to our action, that's why we are communicating that the total amount that a company can can be awarded is this 15,000 because of the accumulation of applications depending on the number of patents you are mm -hmm. managing in, 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 during the time. Exactly. Okay, so that was the last question. Well, in, in any case, apart from the, from the questions we, are, we, are, we try to answer during this webinar, uh, but do not forget, we have the, the help desk for uh, for individual and specific questions you may have. Uh, in, the, in the case that uh, the question can be answered through the guide for beneficiaries, we will refer to the to the page and and to the information. In the case there is something much more specific and and and, 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 and let's say complex, uh, we will answer you by by email. Um, and uh, well, um, still we probably you you will be informed that the, we have this uh, fourth cutoff uh, cut open until until the 26th of March. Um, and well, yeah. So we invite you to to apply again if you if you think um, that you have uh, another potential European patent. Uh, Within your company, uh, knowledge, or know-how, or, or technology that can be protected via that 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 instrument. Uh, it's important for you to know, as you as you as you as you know, um, that uh, we can only going back to the question of maximum amount and so on. We can only reimburse fees in terms of fees, service two or service three, uh, that are uh, charged to you after we communicate. That we you have been selected, so if you so the planning the time mean would be some that if you present if you submit another application to us by the for the fourth cutoff date 26th of, 6th of March, we will communicate some when in early April. So uh, if you think you are going you can have um, April fees for another patent or IP attorney fees for another patent between the beginning of April and four months after, you may you may consider to, to apply to to us again. Okay, and if you have two more patents or three more, you can also do the same. And of course, as I, we were saying, we also have not only this fourth cut of date, we will have a fifth and a sixth. Uh, states I cannot remember at this moment, but will be probably be, be May or June, and then September again, or something like it, it during this year. So you can planify or you plan your 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 applications to a program, uh, depending on the on the strategy, on on the eventual cost on these uh, April fees or attorney fees you may have in the future during this year. And that's that's that, that would be it. So we invite you to to participate and to apply again. Uh, during the next months, if it's a case of, of of interest to you. So 
So well, yeah, but so we are ready to close. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope this is just the first step for interacting with you and uh, well, the team of the of CARSA, but also the team from from Gopa is ready to receive your questions and and to interact with you uh, because this is a somehow uh, a long process and uh, we want to for you to close the, the services awarded. Yeah. So thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.